Hey guys, how's it going? Welcome to my studio. This is Paint with Lovejoy. Thanks so much for joining me today. If you're here for the first time, thanks so much. Make sure you hit the subscribe button so you can check out my other videos. And if you're here for a second or third or fourth video, thank you so much for your support. Uh, greatly, greatly appreciate it and welcome back. Um, in today's video, we're gonna be giving tribute to Van Gogh and kind of focusing on his very expressive, impressionistic style and painting uh, one of his iconic pieces. So it's gonna be a lot of fun. And Van Gogh is a very popular paint at home subject matter. So I think you guys are gonna enjoy this. With this painting and any painting that I teach, you are more than welcome to switch out colors, uh, change it up, make it your own. Um, and quite a few people do that even with the old master painting. So feel free to change out and make it what you want. What you're gonna see in the description box below is a link to a supply kit. And in that supply kit are all the colors, paints, brushes, surfaces that you might need to get started painting at home. So grab any of those extra uh, supplies that you might need and then pick up the video for the painting portion. Another thing that you're gonna see in the description box below is a link to a traceable. And a traceable is a way for my first time and beginner painters to get your initial composition on your canvas without having to stress out about drawing and without basically having to stress out. So check the link below to where to acquire the traceable. And there's also a video on how to transfer your traceable to your surface. When you are a little bit more comfortable with your painting process and you wanna take your skills to the next level, check out my online school, paintwithlovejoy.com and check out my uh, featured course on there, Paint Your Pet. And you will be painting from your own pet photograph and I'll go through the process on how to break it down and pick which photo and go through the process of painting. But when you paint something you care about, it's a whole new ball game for you. And you actually learn more and you put more energy into um, making it awesome. And it's your pet, so it's gonna be awesome. Uh, and that course is geared towards first time and beginner painters. So check it out and just keep evolving your skills as you get more and more into the creative process. So I think that's enough talking. Let's go ahead and get started painting. guys it's gonna be another fun Van Gogh painting so grab your supplies transfer your traceable to your surface and as always make sure you take your progress photos now what you're gonna see on mine is I did go over my traceable lines with a black sharpie marker and that is for those of you at home that are gonna draw what you see uh, those of you that are using the traceable you do not have to do the black outlines on top of your traceable so we're going to start with the background and we're going to start with kind of a light um, yellowish green. So I started with the white, added a little bit of green and then added the yellow. And here are a few brush strokes to try as you fill in your background. And I recommend that you try all of them. And we are going to be filling in that background completely aside from the table. And you're going to notice that I make my color each time instead of making a big giant pile of this color. I want you to do that with yours because this is good practice to get into for mixing paint. Um, in the beginning you may find it a little frustrating because you can't get exactly the right color each time, but each time that you mix the color, your brain's taking in that information of how much pigment, how much white, how much water, you know, how much anything. Um, so go ahead and just kind of get in that habit. And before you know it, you'll know how to mix your colors really, really well. And if you are using student grade paint, I do recommend that you apply your paint thicker. That way um, you can do some blending and you'll get a little bit better coverage, um, especially if you're using student grade paint. And also, if you are painting right now, take a big inhale, just relax. Uh, you're doing a great job and it's awesome that you're taking time out of your day to paint. So I'm proud of you. Now we are following a Van Gogh painting, and if you want to pull up the original painting, just type in um, Van Gogh flower vases, and you'll see quite a few, and you can find this image. I'm keeping with the colors that he has in his painting, but you have full permission to um, change colors and switch anything out to make it more to your liking. Um, with that being said, you can also pull up that original image and if you want to reference the original Van Gogh painting and add anything that I do not add, go right ahead and do that. 
And here you can see I took some of that yellow, placed, uh, painted it right on top of the background just to warm up that one section. Um, and this is called Wet on Wet Blending. We won't do a whole lot of that today in this painting, but some other paintings I teach, we do a lot of that. So you do want to clean your brush, pause your video and take that progress photo. We are going to be filling in with a light pink, that table. And it is pretty light, but if you want to go a little darker, a different color, go right ahead. And I do recommend that you let your background dry so that way you don't mix that green in with the pink if you happen to overlap any of the paint. And if you didn't wait and you happen to overlap some of the paint, just wipe it off and then reapply the appropriate color. And if you're painting on a stretched canvas, uh, carry the color around the sides of the canvas while you have the color made. It'll make it a little bit easier for you now than trying to match the color at the end of uh, the painting. So here we're doing burgundy, and that is red with a little bit of black. And you'll notice that a little bit of black goes a long way to make it kind of dark. And here you'll actually see uh, kind of the transparency of my student grade paint. So I do want you to apply it a little bit thicker if you're running into the same thing of what you're seeing on the video. And we will do a little bit of that wet on wet blending um, with some shadow values um, on the vase in just a moment. So here, right here, grab a little bit of black. We're going to kind of put it on the bottom right and the top left and then wipe that brush off. So you're wiping off any excess paint. And with light pressure, you go back and just kind of blend, lightly blend that darker color into the base of the burgundy. And again, remember to breathe. So a good spot to take your, pause your video and take your progress photo. We're going to go with that direct red right now, and we're going to start to section off this uh, bouquet of flowers. And like I said earlier, because we're using student grade paint, we're going to layer base colors, and then we're going to put a second layer on top of it, and that will help increase our opacity as well as um, give us more volume and depth in the painting. So just taking that red, fill in that whole space in, slap the paint on there. Um, it's Nice to just kind of do that, work out any frustrations, escape from your day, and just kind of get lost into the movement of putting paint on the canvas. You're doing a great job. And if at any point, if you need to switch brushes, use a smaller or bigger brush, feel free to switch out for what you need as we go along the process. All right, so just adding a little bit more, thickening it up, uh, then we'll be moving into our other colors to fill up the remaining uh, canvas space. All right, so clean that brush really good. We're going to move into green paint, and again, just kind of filling in the remaining canvas space before we start putting our second layers on there. And same thing with the red. You will notice the green is kind of transparent, um, so apply your paint a little bit thicker, and it'll make it easier. Uh, and better coverage. And I encourage everybody to find creative outlets on a regular basis. Hopefully while you are painting, um, you kind of forget about the rest of the world, forget about work, forget about school, anything. And again, just kind of get lost in the process of moving paint across the canvas and transforming a blank white surface into um, something you created. All right, so we're going to clean that brush, take your progress photo. Um, that top section actually has purple, so we're going to take that purple, um, lighten it up just a touch, not a whole lot, uh, maybe two parts purple to one part white. And again, just getting that base on there, applying it a little thicker uh, for the coverage. And by the time we fill this in, we will have what we call the underpainting. Um, where the base colors are kind of laid in there, and then we'll be building our layers on top of it. So with acrylic paint, um, that's one of the beautiful things about acrylic paint, is you can layer quite a bit, and you can layer kind of quickly, whereas this paint will dry in about 15 minutes. All right, so another spot to pause your video and take your progress photo. Um, it is okay to let your paint fully dry at this point, and that's what I did on mine. And we're going to start adding foliage and flowers. So we're going to start with a yellow green. And as we go through um, kind of the remaining portion of the painting, 
I want you to think about your basically observing where I place some of these colors, the lines, dash marks, and uh, blobs or dots that I make, and just mimicking that to the best of your ability um, at home. And we're going to be putting a, about three different um, shades or values. We're going to have kind of a light color, a medium, the main color, and then a dark shadow value. And that's what kind of helps us create this illusion. All right, so still with that kind of yellow-green mixture, a little bit more yellow in it, adding some of the stems and other place where the foliage in this bouquet would be. Now, as you go along and paint this, and whether you're following along with the video or you are referencing the original Van Gogh painting, you are strengthening your power of observation. And that's a big part in the art world and really in life. Um, you can actually never be too observant, and it only improves kind of all areas of your life the more observant you are. So the more observant you become in painting, the more you're going to show that uh, the more you're going to see that skill show up in other aspects of your life. All right, and still with that yellow and green mixture, sometimes it's a little more green, sometimes it's a little more yellow. Right now I am using a bit more of the green for a little bit darker. And I am using that medium flat brush and kind of holding it sideways or for this part right here using the full width of the brush. So again, as you're in your beginning stages of getting comfortable with painting, try holding your brush in different directions, try different applications. Um, this is how you're going to strengthen your skills um, and get more and more comfortable with the creative and painting process. And if you need to, like doing right here, we're moving down to the small pointy brush. We're going to make a light orange. And I didn't actually put orange on the plate, so we're going to make our own. And that is yellow with a little bit of red. And we're going back to the vase and making these kind of arc lines. And this gives the illusion that this vase is round. And it's almost like they're um, almost like little smile lines that just uh, arc across. So again, just observe where you see me place those. Um, and also now where we're placing the centers of the daisy um, of our flowers that we'll be adding to later. And your paint should be dry, so this should sit on there pretty solid. Um, and since this is a lighter color, it is easier if your paint is dry um, before you add this shade of orange. And again, if you're looking at the original Van Gogh painting and you see um, a color or a shape or something that I did not add to it, feel free to um, observe what you see and add it to your canvas. And as we get into making some of the flowers, um, we're going to be making little dash marks. And kind of if you think of each dash mark as maybe a petal on the flower, or when we get into some of the poppies, we're going to basically be making blobs. And I've noticed for my beginner painters and first time painters, when you're painting flowers, it's kind of overwhelming when you say I'm painting a flower because you want to put in all the details. And the great thing about Van Gogh's paintings and Van, uh, Monet's um, and the impressionistic movement is that they are literally blobs of color next to each other in an appropriate arrangement. Um, and as we look at it from a distance, then we um, see the actual shape and what it becomes. So as we go through this, you are painting blobs or dash marks or uh, lines. Keep it simple. And you saw while I was talking that we took some of the white and went back to those arc lines on the vase. Again, observe what you see and where they were placed. And now we're moving into those daisies. Um, and we're going to do the daisies that are on the background. And each petal that radiates out from that center is literally just a long dash mark. And it does radiate around that center. So if you need to, rotate your canvas. Um, and also notice that every two or three brush strokes, I'm going over and grabbing more paint. You want to make sure you, that you do that so that way you're actually applying something to the canvas um, compared to just going through the motions and not applying anything. So every two or three brush strokes, grab more paint, and you're making these radiating dash marks um, around these centers. And because this is an impressionistic painting, when we are done, um, and you step back and look at your painting, you're going to go, yep, those are daisies. Your brain's going to fill in the details 
even though we're not doing every single petal exactly. And again, remember to breathe as you're doing this. You might not realize it, but you might be holding your breath. And if your brush starts to shake, then that means you are holding your breath. So if you exhale as you touch the brush to the canvas, it will make it a little bit easier for you. So now we're moving into a light purple, and that is white with a little bit of purple. And moving up to that purple section, and we're, this is should be lighter than what that first layer you put on there. And again, we're doing those little dash marks, thinking that each dash mark is a petal um, on the flower. And if you need to mix your color a second or third time and it's a little lighter or a little darker, that's okay. You can always adjust. And again, remember to grab that paint every two and three brush strokes. You're doing a great job. I'm really proud of you. Um, as you paint, I do recommend that you prop your painting up, get out of your chair, look at it from a distance of five to ten feet away. Notice it from that distance. Generally, you are going to like it a little bit better because everything in life looks better from a distance. There is no avoiding it. But also from this distance, um, this is the normal viewing distance for artwork and most things in life. So kind of getting in that habit while you're creative of looking at it from that perspective will help your creative development. All right, so now we're moving into the purple. Same thing, dash marks, um, kind of putting that third darker value into the shade. And again, just giving the illusion that we have these really pretty pointy uh, purple flowers on this side of the vase. And after you paint this and you look at flowers um, after this, I want you to start noticing where is your darkest part of the flower, where is your main color, and what is the light color that you see as you look at the flower. All right, so now going into that red, and again, these were poppies, so they're kind of a blob shapes, but just they uh, dance in the wind quite a bit. So we're gonna go over the ones we already did and add some new ones and put a second layer um, in that red section. And again, applying that kind of thick, grabbing more paint um, every couple of brush strokes, and observing what you see either on the video or uh, the original Van Gogh painting. And again, as we get into here, these are just blobs. We're going to go in with a darker shadow element and a lighter element later on. And this is why the progress pictures are important, because if you take progress pictures um, and then go back and look at them after you know what your final looks like, it's very satisfying. So now going back to that burgundy, and that was the red and the black. Again, a little bit of black goes a long way. And for a few of those centers, um, I do actually have the direct black on there, but because the paint is wet, it is picking up some of the red paint underneath. And adding more to the canvas or to your palette as needed. And here we're basically just making little dots, overlapping them. Again, we're trying to get that darker shadow element so we can create this sense of depth. And even after you do this step, this is a good spot to step away from your painting and look at it from a distance. And again, just notice um, how the red looks next to the burgundy and next to the black. Um, which one kind of starts to jump forward towards you because this is how um, this is how you're a magician basically by uh, having this kind of 3d object on a flat 2d surface and that was one of my favorite things to tell my students was that you guys are magicians you're creating this illusion just with shadows and lights and colors all right so now going into a light orange um, and again, you saw what I just mixed and then I put it on the plate and it got eaten up pretty quickly. So you may even need to just grab that direct yellow or a very light orange. And we're just, again, blobbing on uh, this very light color to be the light color in 
where our uh, red flowers are. So the more that you paint, the more you'll learn to just kind of adjust based on um, the paint that you have, uh, what you're observing, and even the time frame that you have to paint. And I say the only way to fail at painting is to not paint at all. So even if you don't like what you paint, just the fact that you went through the process makes you successful and keep it up. All right, so we're going to go back to that foliage. Um, I'm still using that small pointy brush and the direct green paint um, and making a few of those darker places. So these are going to be some lines. We're going to overlap the vase a little bit. Um, play with the pressure of your brush as you're doing this. Light pressure is going to keep smaller, skinnier lines. A little bit more pressure can help when you're getting some of these um, overlapping, thicker foliage that's happening. And the more that you paint, the more your muscles are going to get comfortable with the pressure of your brush, with mixing your colors, and with observing um, things that you are doing and painting. All right, here going for a little bit darker, going to be the green and the black. Again, just want one more pop color. I like a lot of high contrast. Uh, Van Gogh did as well. Um, so just getting adding a little bit of black to your pigment and then adding it just gives it a little bit more depth. So when we make something darker, it pushes it back. And then when something's lighter, um, it pulls forward. That's part of the illusion that your eye is taking on um, when you're looking at it as well as when you are painting it. So still using that um, green and black mixture for some of the random um, parts of the bouquet, the uh, different vines and sticks and flowers and petals that are in there. Doing good. And again, if you're referencing Van Gogh's original, add anything extra that you may see on your painting or in uh, what you are observing, your reference item. All right, so going in with that direct purple, again, going a little bit darker. And if you need to, you can add a little bit of black to the purple if you need to go that touch darker. Again, increasing that contrast. All right, and going back to the white, we're going to redo those um, petals on the daisy and the daisies that are overlapping that green foliage. So if your green that you added in this area is still wet, let your painting dry before you do this because you want that white to stay pretty pure white. And if there's any wet paint on there, um, it's going to contaminate it and change the color. And again, as you're doing that, every two or three brush strokes, grab more paint. Um, and apply it thicker. And if your brush is shaky, remember to exhale as you touch the brush to the canvas. This also helps with the relaxation part with the conscious breathing. All right, so we're going to do one more. Um, we're going to do a light yellow, and that is going to be white and yellow, just because we need a few of those other colors to pop. And kind of cool, take that progress photo and then add these. And again, when you look at that picture, just notice which colors pop forward, which colors kind of push back. Um, because this is again creating that illusion on a flat surface. All right, you guys are doing great. We've got a few more things that we're going to add, but we are in the home stretch of the painting. I'm really proud of you guys for painting. So I did remake that light pink just to kind of reshape the edge of the table. If you are okay with the edge of your table, you can skip this step right here. Um, and because it's on the Van Gogh one, uh, I will be outlining that table with the black, as well as adding the black in a few other places that Van Gogh put the painting or put this color. I personally don't think it needs the black outline, but I'm following what Van Gogh painted. So again, as you're using that black, 
um, paint and the pointy brush, play with that pressure, treating it kind of like a pencil will get you a little bit of a skinnier line. And remember to keep grabbing more paint as you go along. So that way you can kind of keep the saturation and keep kind of the solidness of the paint. So as you're looking at mine or the original, you'll notice where he outlined uh, some of the flowers with the black, did some of the vines and the foliage with black, and then a few other places. All right, guys, great job. Thanks so much for painting with me. Don't wait too long to do your next painting. And until next time, cheers. Hey guys, how's it going? I hope your paintings turned out really nice and I hope you enjoyed the process of painting. I'm really proud of you. Good job. As you're uploading your pictures to social media, please tag me at or hashtag paintwithlovejoy or email them to me, paintwithlovejoy at gmail.com. Um, it truly is through you guys sharing my channel and videos, you sharing your work that encourages other people to paint. Um, and then when I post your guys' pictures on my social media, it encourages more people to paint. So please keep spreading the word. This channel is as successful as it is based on your guys' support and feedback. So you have brought it here. Let's keep it going. Um, any questions, comments, things you want me to paint in the future, please leave a comment in the description box below and I'll add it to my production list. And um, keep on painting. Keep on getting creative. Thanks so much for taking time out of your day to hang out with me. Really appreciate it. And I look forward to painting with you in the future. Cheers.